Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Um, my name's Stacey and today we're going to be looking at um, how to create watercolour blooms. This is a technique that can happen by accident sometimes if you're not careful when you're painting with watercolours and if you don't want it to happen it can be really annoying but if you sit down with the intention of doing it it makes some really beautiful artwork it's also great in your art journal to make collage papers or note cards and i've also got a couple of tutorials on my blog for things like watercolor gift tags that you can make with um you know a piece of paper that you've covered with this this technique of watercolor blooms or I have another tutorial on my blog for creating rainbow watercolour dandelions, which uses this watercolour bloom technique. So there's um, lots of ways you can use this. So I'm working in my sketchbook today. I'll um, share the details of that in the description of the video. Um, and I'm using my Cotman watercolour set, the Windsor & Newton Cotman set. Um, it's just a little travel set, but um, I really like the paints in this. So. I'm going to start off by wetting my brush and just wetting a bit of the paper slightly. So this is a technique that you kind of need to work fairly quickly because it's important that um, the paint is wet when you're doing this. So um, otherwise you won't get the colours to bleed together. The other important thing is that the paint needs to be a slightly different wetness. So um, for one to bleed into the other you need one to be slightly wetter than the other and it's the wetter paint that bleeds into the drier paint so I'm just putting a patch of this alizarin crimson down just kind of using the colours um, as they come really today and then I'm just going to grab a bit of blue um, a bit more water on my brush and then them next to each other like that and it may or it may not bleed straight away so that's something to bear in mind you add a bit more water and then see what happens um, and you can see the colors are mingling slightly there um, you can also tilt the page slightly just to help it along and you can see where that's spread there so if I were to put something the other side of this blue now, because it's quite wet blue, um, so let's say go in for maybe a little bit more of the crimson here. Sometimes you have to encourage it with a bit more water just along the edge that you want to, um, just along the edge that you want to sort of mingle together. The original colour that we painted is starting to dry a bit here now, so what I'm going to do is another way you can sort of achieve this technique, which is just to drop some clean water from your brush. You need to give it a second just to start to reactivate the colour that's starting to dry. Then you can see um, the, the water starting to spread out and create the bloom there. And then, you know, maybe I could just decide to drop a little bit of blue into that, that wet patch, um, that wet drop there. And just allow that to spread out. So I quite like to do um, flicks as well, which is quite nice. And then depending on how wet the paint is underneath, sometimes it'll stay in little droplets like that, or sometimes it'll sort of mix in. To the wetter paint so let's pick some i'm going to add some green into this so i'm going to pop it into this blue section here which is quite wet so i literally just touch the brush onto the paper and then you can see it spreading out there like that so it's really something to experiment with um sort of some wetter paint, some drier paint, and just see what happens. So the blue down the bottom there had dried quite a lot. So the colours are just kind of going over one over the, the, sorry, so the green is going over the top of the blue. Let's add a bit more water down here. 
and see what we can add in. So what would look nice next to this green? Maybe let's go in with some of the yellow. So I'm just painting a little bit of the yellow in there like that. They seem to be a similar wetness because one isn't really kind of going into the other. So I'm going to add a bit more water into this yellow to hopefully encourage it to mingle into the green. Just tilt my page a little bit just to help it spread. A bit more yellow down here. So you can see like you can you can really do just exactly what you want. Um, I would probably stick to a more cohesive colour palette if I was using this um, other than as a demonstration, you know, if I had a project in mind that I wanted to use this for um, just because it's starting to become a bit of a mishmash here. But, um, you know, you can just do exactly what you want and think about how you want to use it. That green and yellow looks lovely together, though. I really like that effect. I'm going to add a bit more water into this really dark green here just to help it spread into the yellow. Did bear in mind as well that uh, the more water you add to your paint, the wetter it is, you know, the more likely the paper is to buckle. So that's not a problem. I mean, you can easily just let it dry and then... Uh, flatten the page out under some books or something like that. Um, I might just grab my clip just to help keep the page flat here. But I don't mind too much because it's in my sketchbook. So as soon as I close the sketchbook, it's going to flatten out again later anyway. So one thing I want to say at this point is um, bear in mind that this is a really tricky technique to control 100%. You kind of have to except that the paint sort of will spread how it will spread. So, you know, if you've got that in mind and you're kind of happy to go with whatever sort of happens with this, um, it'll be fine. It's as soon as you start getting in mind that you want to do something really specific and then if it doesn't work out, it kind of can be, you know, frustrating. Like with anything, you know, creative. Um, but just keep that in mind. And it, this will be a really fun technique. So you can see here, I'm just doing something else as well. Just where I've painted this green section here, I'm just painting a little bit of just um, clear water uh, just to encourage it to spread out and sort of diffuse into this area just to create those really soft edges. And you can see there it's spreading out really nicely. So I'm going to add a bit more alizarin crimson. It doesn't really go with green. But let's see how it spreads. Just dropping it into this wet paper, the, the, the wet part of the paper. They certainly pop next to each other being complementary colours. I'm going to try not to mix them too much because it's going to turn muddy where, they, where they're where they sort of um, next to each other. Just here it's starting to a little bit, but I really love this section here where the green is really spread out into the yellow. And you will find when you're doing this that uh, the longer you leave it, um, as it starts to dry, it'll start to look different. And um, so that's something else that's quite fun about this is that, you know, you can come back to it a bit later and realise that it looks quite different from how you were, uh, how you left it. So flicking a bit of green into this now and you can see where the yellow there is still wet. It's sort of spreading out, but where it's dried a bit more here, it's just like those distinct sort of dots of paint. So that's another fun thing to do with when you're painting watercolour blooms. Um, I love flicking paint anyway, you know, obviously make sure you've um, covered any surfaces that you don't, that you don't want to get paint on and, you know, cover your clothes and, and whatever. But um, that's another fun thing to do with this. So there you go. That is a quick introduction 
um, to watercolour blooms and how you can use them in your art journal or other artwork. Uh, like I said, I've got a couple of other tutorials on my blog that go a bit further into, you know, how you can use this to create other projects. But otherwise, I hope you have fun experimenting with this technique and I will see you again soon in another video. Bye.